Hello and welcome to Med4 Care. I am Dr. Care and today's topic will be Oliguria. Let's find out together what it is. Oliguria is a clinical condition in which the amount of urine produced is lower than normal. Indeed, in the case of Oliguria, the amount of urine is less than 400-500 ml throughout the day or in any case less than 20 ml per hour. The causes of oliguria are many, some of which are not necessarily pathological. In fact, a low intake of fluids for a certain period naturally prompts the body to limit urination as much as possible. In other cases, however, oliguria is secondary to diseases that affect the kidney and urinary tract. In particular, for oliguria three types of causes are to be distinguished, prerenal, renal and postrenal. Prerenal causes result in decreased blood flow to the kidneys. The reduction in blood flow to the kidney results in a large absorption of water and salts and a consequent reduction in the amount of urine. Upstream there may be multiple causes such as hemorrhage, dehydration, myocardial infarction, pulmonary embolism and renal vein occlusion. The renal causes, on the other hand, are attributable to a direct pathological alteration of the renal parenchyma. Renal causes include, for example, acute glomerulonephritis, interstitial nephritis, lupus erythematosus nephritis, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, acute tubular necrosis. Finally, postrenal causes include those conditions in which urine is produced normally but cannot be expelled due to obstructions in urinary tracts. Possible causes can be, for example, benign prostatic hyperplasia, neoplasm compressing the urinary tract, proximal or distal ureteral obstruction. Diagnosis of oliguria takes place simply by considering the volume of urine emitted throughout the day. Once the diagnosis has been ascertained, the evaluation of oliguria must take place quickly to avoid serious complications such as hyperkalemia and coma. The evaluation of oliguria usually involves an ordered series of steps. The first consists of the nephrological examination, complete with anamnesis and physical examination. In particular, during the anamnesis, the doctor investigates the presence of other diseases, such as diabetes mellitus and hypertension, the familiarity of some diseases, or the prolonged exposure to nephrotoxins. After the anamnesis, the doctor proceeds with the physical examination of the patient. First of all, he examines the state of skin turgor and mucous membranes to detect if hydration is compromised. The doctor also carries out an inspection and palpation examination of the urinary tract, with the aim of identifying any obstructions. After the visit, the specialist doctor generally prescribes some laboratory tests. The most requested tests are blood and urine tests and autoimmune testing panels. The presence of a renal and prerenal cause is likely in the case of a low specific gravity of the urine and a value of the urinary sodium concentration greater than 40 millimoles per liter. In particular, in the case of prerenal causes, more invasive tests are often used, such as central venous pressure monitoring with a central venous catheter. In addition, renal Doppler ultrasound, urinary tract ultrasound, or abdominal pelvic CT is usually done to assess kidney perfusion or to detect urinary tract obstructions. The management of oliguria depends on the underlying cause. For example, if it is due to a reversible postrenal cause, such as a kinked or obstructed bladder catheter, replacing the catheter is enough to solve the problem. In the other cases, steps are taken instead in order of priority. The first step is represented by the stabilization of the hemodynamic functions. In these cases, balanced crystalloids can be administered to help the patient recover normal blood volume and a good heart rate. The second step is to set up a diuretic therapy and evaluate the response. To do this, a stress test with furosemide is often used, which should resolve the oliguric state. If oliguria persists, then acute kidney damage is likely to be in progress. The third step is finally constituted by the pharmacological treatment. First of all, if taken, all nephrotoxic drugs must be discontinued. Similarly, drugs metabolized primarily by the kidneys should be avoided if possible, and the methods of administration and doses of those eliminated through the kidneys should be reviewed. 
the patient must also observe dietary recommendations. Proper management of fluids, electrolytes and protein requirements is essential. In some cases, it is also unavoidable to resort to renal replacement therapy, such as extemporaneous or continuous dialysis, to prevent the development of complications. If underestimated or not treated properly, oliguria can have potentially fatal implications. Indeed, acute oliguria can easily lead to anuria, that is, urine production of less than 100 milliliters per day, typical of acute renal failure. Evaluation and medical intervention are therefore essential for a quick and targeted treatment that prevents irreversible aggravation of the patient's clinical condition. We're now at the end of today's video, we hope you enjoyed it. If you found it useful, please support us with a nice like and subscribe to the channel. See you soon on Med4Care.